Hi everyone, my name is Shaira. Today, we are going to learn about the structure of a leaf. Leaf is the main organ of a plant. It involves in photosynthesis, transpiration, and acting as the site for gases exchange. For example, in plant respiration. The structure of a leaf can be divided into two sections, which are the external structure and internal structure. The external structure of a green leaf consists of the lamina and the petioles. The lamina is the green and flat, smooth and thin part of the leaf. It is flat in shape in order to provide a wide surface to expose the cells to contain, that contain chloroplasts to maximum amount of sunlight. Lamina is also thin to allow efficient diffusion of gases in the leaf during photosynthesis. Next is the petiole. Petiole is the leaf stalk that connects the lamina to the stem of the leaf. Petiole stretches into the lamina which produces the network of middle vein to support the lamina. Before we continue to the internal structure of a leaf, do you know that leaves grow without overlapping each other to enable them to receive optimum light to carry out photosynthesis? This arrangement is called leaf mosaic. Ouch! These are some of the examples of leaf mosaic arrangement. As you can see, the leaves do not cover or block the surface of each other, which will cover them to, to be exposed to optimum amount of sunlight. Right now, I am observing the internal layer of a leaf under a microscope. Wow! There are so many cells! Now, let's move on to a more easy and colourful pictures of the internal structure of a leaf. The topmost layer is the cuticle. Cuticle is a waxy, waterproof and transparent layer that covers both the upper and lower parts of leaf epidermis. The cuticle helps the leaf to reduce excessive loss of water through evaporation during transpiration. It also allows the sunlight to pass through because of its transparency. The next layer is the upper epidermis layer, which is just beneath the cuticle layer. It consists of transparent layer of cells without any chloroplasts so that the sunlight can pass through the layer to the next cells. The neighboring layers of cell is the palisade mesophylls. The palisade mesophylls contain many chloroplasts and is the site for photosynthesis. The cells are arranged vertically and closely packed to ensure maximum exposure to light. Underneath the palisade mesophyll is the spongy mesophyll. They have lesser number of chloroplasts than the palisade mesophylls. The cells are irregular in shape to increase the area for gases exchange. They are also loosely arranged and have many intercellular spaces between the cells. This is so that the carbon dioxide and water can be easily absorbed through the leaf surface to palisade mesophyll cells during photosynthesis. The next structure of leaf that we are going to learn today is the vascular bundle. Vascular bundle is a part of transport system in a plant. It consists of two types of tissues, which are the xylem and phloem. Xylem is responsible to transport water and mineral salts absorbed from the root to the leaf. Xylem's walls are lignified and thickened to provide mechanical support and strength to the plant. As for the phloem, which is the layers underneath the xylem, has the function to transport organic substances such as sucrose sugar produced during photosynthesis. The organic substances is transported from the leaf to the other part of plant and this transport process is also known as translocation, which is a process we will learn later in Chapter 4. Last but not least is the lower structure of a leaf, which is the lower epidermis. It is located at the lower surface of the leaf in this layer, there are also the presence of many stomata, which is also called a stoma in singular form. Stoma or the stomata are the tiny holes or pores that allows diffusion of gases to occur. Each stoma 
is also guarded by a pair of guard cells, which will control the opening and closing of the stoma. Now, let's go back to the lab. So, before we end our session today, let's have a short recap on what we have learned just now. Today, we have learned about the leaf structure. It consists of the waxy layer of cuticle, followed by the transparent upper epidermis. Underneath it are the tightly packed and vertically arranged palisade mesophylls, and subsequently, as the spongy mesophyll layers that are loosely arranged, filled with large air spaces. Next is the vascular bundles, consisting of xylem and phloem, which are both involved in the transport of nutrient within the plant. And lastly, the lower epidermis, equipped with many pores called stomata, which are also guarded by the guard cells. Oops, that's all for today. See you next time.